When you start a new session, you have to create new tracks, of course. There's several ways we can do that. We can do this with the mouse. It would make sense that we would find this in the track menu. And we can go to new. We can hit command shift N. We could change the track width, whether it's mono, stereo, surround, by hitting command left arrow and right arrow on a Mac or control left arrow and right arrow on a PC. Hit control up and down arrow and it will change types of tracks you can have. You don't have to keep closing this and opening it up again. You can hit command plus on a Mac or control plus on a PC and it would bring up another lane here in the new tracks window. So now I have these different types of tracks. The track type icons are pretty intuitive though. On an audio track, it has a little audio waveform. On the aux track, it has a down arrow. That one to me at least doesn't have any obvious logic. The instrument track has a piano, makes sense. For those of you old enough to know what one is, a MIDI track, which you kind of rarely see, has a MIDI connector on it. And then a master track, has the mathematical symbol for summing here. These are pretty intuitive to recognize on the test. In my mix window, I can see a list of my tracks here. And I have my tracks menu that allows me to show and hide different tracks if I want. I can also show and hide them by clicking the little dot that's next to it. If I were to switch into the edit window, I would see that track list up here again so I can add or hide tracks really easily. Another thing I notice about my new session that I might want to set up before I start recording, I have a default tempo of 120. I might want to change that. So I can add a tempo change here. If my cursor is at the beginning of the session and I click this plus key in my tempo bar, it will give me a chance to change this if I want to. I can also double click my song start since it's at the beginning, and that would allow me to change the tempo. Another thing I can do, I can insert anything on a ruler by holding down the control key and putting an event in on any one of these rulers. One thing to remember is that option will take things and put them back into their original state. So I can hold down option and click into the ruler and that will get rid of that tempo event. Let's say it isn't the first song of the day. We have already set up tracks for the band. We've already set up a mix, maybe a headphone mix. Maybe we're trying to record a new song. What we can do is we can just take those tracks into this session. That idea is something called import session data. So you go to file, you go to import session data, and you need to find the session you want to import it in from. So the types of things that you can import may be something as simple as just bringing in a uh, tempo mat, a uh, key signature, markers, window configurations, mic presettings, heat settings. It might be something as complex as bringing in different playlists from a different session. Or you have this big long list of things that you can you could bring in. The long and short of it is, the one thing you can't bring in is your record and input settings. So basically, whether you have armed tracks or not, you cannot bring that into a session from another session. Just a quick thing of how you use this, if we're bringing tracks in as well, like in my previous example, these are the source tracks from the original session. You can see that in my session, I have none. So what I might wanna do is hit Command A for all and just import all those tracks. For this thing that says main playlist, remember what a playlist is, a grouping of clips on a track. If you do not want to import audio files, make sure you click this button that says do not import. You can also check the data to make sure you're not bringing in any clips and media. I'll bring in the markers as well here and click OK. Then the session populates with all the tracks, has the markers where they originally were. If I look at my mix window, I can see that the pans are set up. I can also see that the faders are in various places implying that I have imported in a mix. With a session this large, one thing that I might want to do is I might want to think about having track numbers. I can go up to view, go to track number, and now I can see all my tracks and I can see that I have 25 tracks. One thing that is a test question it's not ever going to be a big deal for most 
Pro Tools operators. Each Pro Tools HD system has 256 voices per card. So if you happen to have two, more than 256 tracks in your session, the tracks to the left in the mix window or the uppermost tracks in the edit window have the highest priority.